If you're like me, you know you should meditate. And I very often try to meditate. I'll sit down, I'll do the own thing, but I give up pretty quickly because it's just not my style. Well, my guest today, Benjamin Langley, has written this book for people like you and me. Master meditation, master your life. But you don't have to be a master. That's the whole secret. You can find out more at Peaceful prosperity.com forward slash blog. Welcome to the show, Benjamin. Thank you very much for having me, Michelle. I love this book because there's so many tricks for people like me where you don't have to learn the whole thing. You even talk about meditating in a traffic light in here. <laughs> I'm glad. it's. There's a lot of ways that you can really get into a deeper space of mind and uh, get peaceful, get focused without you know, joining a monastery or, you know, doing some big, huge, lengthy, formal practice. It's much easier than it's made out to be, and that's one of the goals of the book is to kind of get it out there that, you know, we all in some sense meditate, so it's just a matter of kind of taking control of that process and getting a little more out of it. Do you think it's the word meditation that scares me and, and other people like me? <laughs> it, it is. I mean, it's funny. The uh, When I first started studying the mind and sciences of the mind, uh, hypnosis, big scare word for some people still. And uh, you say hypnosis, and it's like, ooh, and out comes the watch. And like, <laughs> oh, I can put you to sleep and make you do things. And, you know, like it's very, you know, a lot of myth around it. And uh, I think there's a certain amount of that around meditation, too. Maybe not quite as much, but there, I mean, it draws up an image in the mind. You know, there's that guy, and he's sitting off by himself for hours at a time, and maybe he's got a robe on and a shaven head, and he's burning incense, and he has absolutely no interruptions, and if you tried to interrupt him, he wouldn't even hear you because he's so deep within his own yeah, really, I mean, how, how functional is that in day-to-day -day life? I mean, there's nothing wrong with joining a monastery or something like that, but I, uh, I'm my audience is... Uh, primarily composed of people that aren't interested in joining a monastery. They still want to have their job or their business or their family or whatever in their daily life. They just want a little more relaxation, a little more focus, a little bit better results when they uh, when they work with their mind, when they, you know, set intentions and try to, you know, bring them about in the world. So when, if I learn to meditate, and let's call it a deep, different word for a moment, because that, okay. that word scares me a little. But if I can learn to focus and quiet mm -hmm. my mind, that's basically what meditation is. Is that correct? That's that's how I primarily teach it. The two things that I focus on the most, I focus on, is building focus and learning how to relax a little deeper than uh, you're typically used to. If you just bring a little more of those two things into your daily life, you'll not only be amazed at how much more you get done, you'll be amazed how much better you feel, that's the really powerful thing. I mean, there's so many things out there about relaxation, and really it's important and it's powerful. And if you look around, people still aren't getting it. It doesn't matter how much people talking about are talking about it. it. People just don't do the things that they need to do in order to bring that relaxation into what they do. And a lot of people, at least on one level, love what they do. But when you stack enough goals or enough tasks or projects or whatever else it may be out there, plus family time, friends, trying to you know have a little bit of downtime just doing something you enjoy to do, when you stack all those in and are trying to navigate through all of it, it can be quite a mess. And I mean, rather than relaxing and being peaceful and coming to each new thing fresh and energetic, and just bringing your full presence to it. It's like each thing takes a little more out of you. You're a little more tired, a little more frazzled. And, you know, when you get to your family time, your family doesn't really get the best out of you. When you're working with customers or, you know, fellow employees, if you, you know, work for a business or whatever it may be, uh, they're not getting the best out of you either. And really, you know, there's this kind of, uh, idea that it, there's only so much to go around. That's not true. You can bring the best of yourself to your entire life. You just have to implement a few basic practices to learn to do that. And it's very easy. It's very simple, very straightforward. I tried to include enough variety so anybody could find something they would uh, enjoy doing in the book. Yeah, you did. Now, give our audience like one tip for people that are just so busy that they think adding meditation into life is just, is just another task. Give me a tip that will help 
Well, I'll actually, uh, I could give you something that just uh, I speak about a lot. This particular drill isn't in the book. Uh, you can kind of look at it as a bonus uh, when I, uh, I'm going to release some bonuses for the book uh, in the near future. But th this is a simple exercise we can do right now. Very simple and straightforward. And I'll tell you, we'll do the exercise and I'll tell you the keys to it after we do the exercise. So just sit in a relatively upright posture, get your spine more or less erect. And if you're watching, you know, please do it with us. It's not going to hurt. It's going to feel great. It's very easy. So just do this with me. All you're going to do is take three deep breaths. So go ahead, breathe in as deeply as you can. And as you exhale, just say, ah. Very nice. Let's take a second deep breath. Exhale. Ah. Very nice. One more time. Take a deep breath. Exhale, let it all go. And now just take one moment. If you're looking at me and Michelle, you can probably see the muscular has changed in our faces. We're more relaxed now. We carry a lot of tension in the head, the face, the neck, the shoulders, and we don't even realize it because it's there so constantly. So if you did the exercise, notice how relaxed you feel right now. Notice the change in your subjective perception of yourself. Notice how you feel, just pay attention to it for a moment. And that's a reward in and of itself. When you notice yourself feeling good, it makes you wanna do the thing that made you feel good more and more and more. That's all it is to building a meditation practice. It is just that easy. And one of the tricks to getting the best results out of this technique is to just be aware of your state more as you go about through the day. Because when you're not paying attention, what happens is little emotional things start to build. You know, maybe someone cuts you off in traffic, and it's not a big deal. We're all trying to get to work or get where we're going, whatever, but you're a little bit irritated by it, no big deal. Then something else happens. Uh, somebody gets your coffee wrong at the coffee shop or whatever, and like, eh, well, you know, that's not that big a deal either, but it's a little stack on to that earlier thing. And then something else happens, and another little thing. It's all very little things. It's no huge crisis necessarily. But all those little things add up, and before you know it, you're reacting more strongly and negatively than you intended to. You suddenly can't focus at work anymore. You're tense. You feel your, feel your shoulders right up next to your ears. And all that built up just starting with that one thing that happened in traffic. That one guy that just cut you off might not even have known you were there. Definitely didn't intend to hurt you or upset you. was just trying to get wherever he was going. And if you notice it right then, if you're paying attention, you say, oh, there it goes. You can do the three eyes. It takes 20 seconds, guys. I mean, maybe 30 seconds if you really draw your breaths out. 30 seconds, you can do it in your car while you're driving. You can do it virtually anywhere. You don't have to close your eyes or, you know, do any crazy ritual. Just three deep breaths and saying, ah, as you exhale, it will blow that little bit of stress out. You'll be able to laugh about it. And when the next thing comes up, you can blow that out, too, just like that. Now, here's the really cool thing. The more you do this, the more it becomes your natural reaction. When you train yourself, a uh, little stress arises, boom, get rid of it. A uh, little stress arises, boom, let it go. When you train yourself like that again and again and again, as soon as you start to go there, it's gone, whether you do the breaths or not. Now, the breaths feel great, so I encourage you to keep doing them throughout the rest of your life, but you'll notice the more you practice, the less you need to practice, the more it's your natural instinct to bring focus and relaxation to every activity of your daily life. Three breaths, you, I could feel it. I could feel just becoming more into myself and into the present and not worrying about doing an interview. I right. love that. And people have said that before to breathe. It's you know one of the techniques that we're often told to do. But the way that you just brought it right now into the present and we relaxed together was really powerful. Thank you for that. You're very welcome. Thank you. Can I do that on and off throughout the day? Am I going to hyperventilate? You, no, no, no. There's, there's no risk of hyperventilation. And if you feel like at the end of three breaths, you haven't quite got it yet, you can do three more. I mean, usually... Here's the challenge. When you aren't monitoring your level of stress, if it's totally out of hand and you're full on angry or yelling or, you know, where, wherever you've gone at this point, uh, you can still do the three odds. It will still help, but it's now at this point, it's like a forest fire and you're throwing buckets of water on it. Um, if you catch the fire when it's just a couple of twigs burning, you don't even have to throw a bucket of water on it. You can step it out with your foot. I mean, so that's <laughs> really the best way to do it. Now, again, it still helps if you're upset, you know, if you've really gotten upset, but, uh, 
the best way to really handle that is what's uh, called in some circles a break state, where you basically immerse yourself in a different situation temporarily. Uh, there's lots of different ways to do it. Um, you know, if, you, if you're in a situation where you can listen to a bit of comedy or watch a bit of comedy or something that makes you laugh, you know, whoever really makes you, you know, Get, get amused, laugh really hard. That can help, of course. If you're at work, that might not uh, be the best thing to do, or you might not be able to do that. If you could just sometimes, you know, go to the bathroom, uh, you know, di- not just, you know, go go take a break, you know, get away from whatever it is that's uh, causing the stress, and then do the three eyes. Usually, that'll have a lot better results. But again, the best way to use this. This is how I beat road rage. I used to freak out behind the wheel if uh, yeah. I had to wait. Yeah, yeah, really. Yeah. I used to really uh, get knuckle white at the steering wheel, and uh, you know, this is really all it is. The you know, the breathing, and I don't always just do the three eyes, just learning deep breathing drills. But the real thing, because I'd known that for a while, and here's a fun thing: if you learn these kind of things, if you study that anything where it's like positive thinking or breathing or controlling your state or anything like that, you'll get into a space where you've lost control of it, and rather than saying ah, it happens, you know, I'll relax and get back in control, you say, dang it, you know, I should be in control of my stuff. You know, I, I know this stuff, and it'll sure. make it worse. Right. It takes it to the next level, you know. So, And I did that for years with breathing exercises. I'd be like, why can't I control it with these breathing exercises? I'd let it get out of hand. I mean, that's like, you know, the fireman with only a bucket of water saying, why can't I put out this forest fire? Well, if you had been on the scene, you know, when it first started, you easily could have put it out. But you're not. You're trying to handle a huge crisis now. So the best way around that is never let it get to huge crisis. Just bring that little bit of mindfulness into where you are. And when you see it start to escalate, boom, handle it right there. And it's it's a non-issue. Benjamin, I love this one tip that you've shared. The book is full, full, full of tips. I mean, um, meditation tip 46, but then you've also got things, uh, not just tips in here, examples and posture, and you've been there. You know what it's like to be a regular, you know, on the go kind of kind of guy, and you still are. The difference is now you can bring that calm, peace, and focus to your life. Thank you so much for being a guest on the show today. The book is Master Meditation, Master Your Life. You can get it at Peaceful Prosperity dot com thanks again thank you michelle